G'day viewers, and in today's video, excuse me, <coughs> I've got um, a pile of things that were given to me by my daughter's friend. Uh, her husband was really concerned about the information on hard drives, etc. Wanted her to put drill a hole through it, and I said, no, 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 look, it's easier if you don't, for me, it's easier for me, but I guarantee you I would totally dismantle and destroy every part of the, laptop, uh, the hard drive. So this video is not only for you guys to see what I'm doing, but also for her to see that everything is safe and that she can bring hard drives to me without any problems. So to start with, the tools I find most handy for this type of thing are wire cutters, flat screwdriver, normal screwdriver, uh, and also this kit here. It's got almost every single type of screw attachment you would want. Tiny little flatheads, Phillips screwdrivers, to the bigger ones, and then it's got um, Torx pieces, it's got reverse Torx pieces, it's got triangular ones for the back of uh, power boards, it's got hex pieces. They're magnetic as you can see, I'll just pick one up by mistake. It's got all kinds of things. So, Pretty much everything you'd want there's only occasionally that i have a problem with that where i don't have the right piece but nine times out of ten it's all here so i have that and the screwdriver that comes with it and you put your pieces on the end there now i've got a few little hard drives that you would see in laptops etc and i'll put those here I've also got this, which is some kind of hard drive, I do believe. I don't know for sure. I've never seen one like this. I'll have to work out how to get into that. Put that there for now. And there's three of these, which I know are hard drives. You can see, well, I can see inside there's a hard drive in there. I'm just going to break the plastic open to get into it. So I've got three of those. As I'm going to go through all the things on this video uh, that this lady gave me even though they're not all hard drives so there's a fair bit of scrapping involved here I got a modem here another one the same and another modem a bit different And then I've got this modem here. So sometimes these aren't much fun to get into, but once you get into them, they're usually pretty good. And that's it, apart from a mountain of cords, which are good. I like doing cords. I call them fast money because it doesn't take much to get the wire prepared to go to the scrap out and it doesn't take much to build up quite a bit there's another small modem here and uh, yeah you build up a pile of wires in no time and a nice little return at the tip uh, at the scrap yard uh, which is usually just enough to pay for your fuel uh, maybe more sometimes I get away from the scrap yard with a hundred dollars or more but, uh, so I'll start with those first, I'll get these out of the way, um, well, I'll work on the hard drives first, because I don't think this other lady wants to sit through my whole video just to see the hard drives destroyed, and then I'll move on to the modems last. Alright, so I'll show you how I do these cords, everyone's different I guess, but uh, there's different types of cords that are treated in different ways. And all around the world, there's different classes when they get to the, to the metal merchant and how they want things prepared. Um, even in, on the other side of Australia, it's different to over here. So to start with, all I have to do is chop the cord, I plug off. And then this side here, I choose to pull the pins out, which is really easy like so, 
some plugs are a bit hard, most of the time they're pretty easy. Chop the plug off, it goes in the bin. Now there's two strands of wire there, and all I do, get my Stanley knife, and I put a little cut down the start here, in between the two strands of wire, just enough so I can grab each side and then I, I pull it apart like this so I do this with power cords now this is one of the power wires the sheath goes in the bin this one and this is the other one I won't do all the power cords like this on video I'm just showing you how I do them I can find the start get it started there's the other power wire so there's two power wires from that cord now what I would do is I strip all the plastic coating off and get nice bright wire I'm not going to do that now I'll do all the power cords later I just wanted to show you what I'm doing uh, Another power wire here. Chop it off. Grab hold of the, the plug, the pin. Sometimes, it, like I said, these are a bit hard. There we go. It's not out. Some people think, oh, what do you mess around with the plugs for, you know, the little pins on here, but they do mount up. This is an awkward shaped one. It'd be nice if I can get to it from a different angle. If I can't pull them out, I just cut them off. Like so. Cut the plug off. Done. Now I'll put this aside and I'll do it later with all my other power cords I've got down on the floor here. Put all this down there as well. And the other side of this, chop the plug off, that goes in with my transformers, electric motors, things like that. And then I'm left with this power cord. And once I take the plug off that, Unravel it, someone's wound it up. Like so. There's a split down the middle. You can see there's two strands of wire. So I just get that started. Like so. And then separate them. And then they get stripped. Same with this one here. Got plug off. The other end, another plug. Transformer box. There's a transformer inside there. I don't need to take this box apart. I just throw it straight in transformers. Again, I split this wire. Get it started. Hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Separate it. Two more wires for stripping. Another power cord here. You can see why I say fast money because it's quick. It doesn't take much to, uh, to get this sorted. needs to be split down the middle with a knife and put it in power cords I can get through 10 or 20 kilos of wires very fast it doesn't take much at all now before I cut the plug off 
I find it easier to have some wire to hold on to because it's a small power unit so get plug out now I cut the plug off again there's a little thing inside there a little transformer and so on that goes straight into the transformer box Split it. Separate them. That's my phone. If anyone wants to know what the noise is, getting messages on my phone. I like doing cords. It really mounts up quick, it doesn't take much at all to get a decent amount of weight together. Transformer. I know I've seen on some videos where the people have to actually separate that box to get the transformer board out, but where I am I don't have to. I'm nearly done with all the cords. That's how quick it is. Transformers. Now this is data cable. It's not like the power cables. There's nothing in that. There's rubbish. This here I can't strip. It goes in my data cable container. Same with this one. That goes in the brass. You can see there's already a nice little pile of brass just in a few minutes. Cut the plug off, transformers. Cut this plug off, and we're done. All those cords done. Tra um, straight in the data cable. Now, I'll start with these little ones here. Uh, I've got to undo some screws there and there, and get this plastic off. If I can peel the sticker off that way, I'm having trouble locating the screw. I know it's in this area here, but there we go. Okay, it's just a little screw that was hiding in there. I guess they do that so that they can void the warranty if someone's pulled the hard drive apart. It's pretty hard to pull it apart without destroying the sticker. Okay, so now this is just a piece of aluminium. Goes in my aluminium container. And there's another little screw holding these magnets on. These are the real earth magnets. A lot of people use these because they're the strongest magnets you can get. And I know a lot of people sell these on eBay. Just like that with the steel attached. There's a steel backing and a little magnet there. I personally don't. Um, so this is the card reader. This is what swings out onto the, the discs here and reads the information. On this thing here I'm undoing there's these pins at the back Hello? so obviously they connect onto the board send the information through to the reader or from the other direction whichever and these particular pins sometimes have gold sometimes don't I'm just getting the rubber seal off so I can get a better look at it and 
Yeah, there's a bit of gold on there, so I'll sort that out in a minute. Of course, I dropped the hard drive. Uh, another little screw in here. So I'm taking every part of this hard drive apart. I doubt very much anybody's going to want to grab all these pieces and put the hard drive back together. Why would they? There's nothing to gain from it. couple of screws holding this bottom magnet in because there's one on top one on the bottom sandwiched between this uh, card reader I get my flat screwdriver here and pry this up this card reader the back of the reader and then I can get underneath it usually leave it off like I said the smaller hard drives are really fiddly sometimes there's a screw on the back here not always so there probably is in this case Murphy's Law says there would be because I'm filming so it would have to be harder than usual. Yep, there's a screw there. I could do a hundred hard drives off computer off uh, off camera, and as soon as I start recording, there'd be one there, just to make life hard for me. I'm just applying some pressure to the card reader now because it's being awkward so as I apply pressure it makes the, the screw stop spinning around or so what I'm going to need to do is a little flat screwdriver piece in there and it's just going around and around and around so of course it's going to be like that while I'm on camera. Now I need to have eight sets of hands so I can try and hold it as well as do this. But I'm trying to get the cutters and cut it out. It was easier. So there's the other magnet. For this card reader, you got a bit of brass here, or copper, sometimes, sometimes copper, sometimes brass. See if I can separate that bit of metal that's inside it. I know it looks very awkward. I'll sort that out later. Now there's uh, said to be gold on the tips of these. Apparently, it runs along the front of the, the top of the card reader to this little board. A, st a strip of ultra fine gold which I've never uh, had any luck from I've actually kept these and this strip of stuff and put it in acid and tested it and it was not worth catch see there's the little plastic strip it's not worth the time doing it so I don't bother with those but in any case that's that done now these platters be very careful with these little ones the little hard drives because that's glass it will shatter if you try and break them if you try and lever it out so I just get a knife and run some scratches through it just to muck up the, the disc see it breaks like that it's glass so at least now I know that flat is no good now these can shatter into tiny shards and you'll know all about it then because they will sh cut your fingers to shreds. So be ultra careful with these. They're a nice little bit of extruded aluminium. Another piece of extruded aluminium. 
bit of glass from the board of the chip, so that one's no good now. No one ever get information off that. The same with this one. I could snap it like that, but like I said, shards of glass will go everywhere. And you get them in your feet, and you get them in your hands, and there's already I've already got a little cut. So I'm just going to score it with a knife. Hopefully it won't shatter in my hands. And this disc will never be red again. It's useless now. Okay, so I don't keep these for the so-called platinum that's on them. There's, there's been videos of people trying to get the platinum off and you need hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and they're not worth the time. So now that hard drive's done. All I'm left with is a nice piece of cast aluminium. I don't take this centerpiece out. Sometimes there's three screws on their back and the whole motor comes out. But these ones are press fit and I just leave it like that and put it in my cast aluminium. So I'm going to do these other two off camera. Because it's exactly the same as what I just did. <laughs> Excuse me. Hiccups. So now we'll move on to one of these ones. They're all different and I've got to try and figure out with each one of them how they come apart. Usually you take the rubber feet off and there could be a screw under there, but no, not this time. I can't see any screws anywhere, so that means that this whole plastic thing would be a press fit, clip together type deal. I get my little flat screwdriver, see if I can pry into it. Like so. Once you get it started, you can usually just pull it out. Like that, that's just plastic. Uh, some screws there. Trying to figure out where everything goes. Of course I dropped my cutters. And so this is the main hard drive here. This is the board that's on the hard drive. So there's some screws there to undo. And of course they're gonna put a piece of rubber right in front of the screw. I'm sure they do this on purpose. When they make it, I think, how can we make this hard for someone to pull apart? Let's try putting this there. Alright, so now I can get to those two. And then it will probably come out of the plastic, I'm imagining, just by clipping out. There is a screw back there. Let's do these ones first. Not too big for that. I need my blue one. And I need to put my little screwdriver attachment back in it. Which I'm pretty sure I went and put back in here for some stupid reason. You see, I'm not concentrating. I've still got brain fog from having COVID. And for those who aren't sure, yes, it's a very real thing. I didn't think so at first when people talked about brain fog. But I can assure you, it's a, it's a very real thing. See, now I've misplaced the screw drive with a Phillips screw attachment. It might be this one. No, that was a lot bigger than what I used before, but it might work this time. Hello? My phone, stop going off. So I've got those two out. Just 
as I thought. Now I can get to the back. tin and I know a lot of videos on YouTube of scrappers they collect tin for the metal yard but tin's nothing they don't give anything for it they'll take it but they won't give you anything for it at least not where I go I've only got a small place I go to the big 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 companies that um, crush cars and things like that they might take it but not not your little independent one where I go all right, so we've got the hard drive out. Now we're gonna get this board off. Yeah, I can't find the right screwdriver attachment now. The one I had before was awesome. This one, not quite the right size. It's doing it though, so I'll have to persist with it. Yeah, again, I apologise if you guys can't see properly or um, hear me properly or whatever. I will definitely try and sort something out for future, but right now, while I need hands-free, this is the only option I've got. All right, so I'm going to try and find this right screwdriver attachment that I had, and I'll be back. All right, so I found the screwdriver attachment that I had before. It works a bit better, it gets deeper into the thread, into the, the cut in the screw, what do you call it, the Phillips bit. There's the board, some pins here, which plugged into those pins there. I didn't know how I bent them off, but it doesn't matter because they will go in with my little container of pins. Now this container is a bit of a mix of everything. It's not just pins. It's just little things that contain gold. All sorts of things in here. There's bits of plastic in there. Doesn't really matter. It all gets treated the same way. I'll show you that on the video when I do it. Uh, so we've got to get this tactical switch off. I'll get some silver out of that. See if I can get this metal piece off. There we go. That little button out, and now I've got a little tactical switch where I'll be able to get silver from. So I'll put that over here with my bits of brass and so on. Uh, there might be, I doubt it, but there might be some gold in here, gold pins. They're usually not gold, but sometimes you get us a nice surprise. Depends on how good a quality the item is, I guess. But there's no gold in this one. And there's a Ethernet sort of plug here which has gold pins. So at the back there's little pins at the there's uh, little legs at the back are for LEDs. Because there's little LEDs in there, I'll get them out later. Get gold out of those. Cut these pins off. Put them in here. So now all the pins are off this board. Got to find out what's under here. I've not done one like this before, so I don't know what's in there. Probably some IC chips. Yep. I'm hoping I've got this in frame for you to see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so six because it's a BGA so six seven eight nine 
nine uh, ICs, a little trans transistor there, uh, a little silver os oscillator, I don't worry about those, they're rubbish. I've got two BGAs, it's a quite a nice size BGA there, a little copper coil, strip that later, and then this one here is not anything, it's just got copper windings on, underneath it. There's some nice MLCCs on there, and on here, some nice size big chunky ones. Some more down here, chunky MLCCs. This would be a mid-grade board. If, if all these ones here were a lot bigger, then it would be a high-grade board, but I would class that just as, low, as a mid-grade board. Uh, some really, really tiny MLCCs on the back here, so small. Put all my boards over there for now. All right, so now, back to the normal board. This is what you would normally find. And I've got, picked out a piece here, which I think is gonna fit. Yep, perfect. So I'll take this small screwdriver attachment out. This time I'm not gonna lose it. I'm gonna put it in the lid where I normally put it and put this one in. A bit hard with my big Neanderthal fingers. These boards are usually a good mid-grade board. Mid to high grade, depends on the quality of the item. Depends on the age of the item, who made it. foam peel the foam off so it's got some nice pins on here cut those off put those in there it's got some chunky MLCCs on there and here got one little BGA there a small IC chip a larger IC chip and another BGA there and the usual nice gold fingers that you get on these hard drives. Um, again, though, I would class that as a mid-grade board. If these chips were bigger, then it would be a high-grade, but I, I personally run this as a, as a mid-grade board. I, uh, I get these fingers out. I'll just chop this bit of plastic here so that it can bend back. Now I can bend it back like that. And nine times out of ten, you can actually lift the plastic off. This probably won't work for me because I'm on camera. Some of the pins are staying in there, that's all right, it's easy enough to get out. Okay, so they've all stayed on there, which is good. There's just a couple that are in here. All right, so I'm getting used to this uh, GoPro. It uh, beeped at me, so I checked the footage and the SD card had filled up. So I had to stop what I was doing, go to the computer, download all the footage so far, empty the computer, uh, the GoPro, and charge the GoPro. I've been out all day, and now I can carry on. So, there's the pins. I don't know if you can see them or not. Um, they're pretty easy to just break off into my little container here. Would have been quicker with pliers, but it does the job. See, most of them just snap off. Pretty easy. Now, again, I would call that a low grade, sort of borderline mid grade board because it's not really, the, C yeah, uh, uh, the ICs aren't very big. There's one there that's big, but uh, BGA is small, another small BGA there. If it was a lot bigger, um, but I'd say if, if that was thrown in with mid-grade and there was a lot of other good boards, I'd let it go. Otherwise, I'd, I'd call that a low-grade board. The reason I'm telling you this is because I am now buying e-waste. 
I haven't had to buy it until now, but I want to get a lot. I want to get uh, not bigger. I want to get a lot more stuff. And see how easy this was compared to the small one, because it's not countersunk down in there. So there's the bit of gold at the top and down at the bottom here. And if I just run the knife across, there you go. That's all we do for the back. Now for the front. Uh, so while I was waiting for the GoPro to charge, etc., I started opening these. I haven't got inside them, but I've just opened them up to make it quicker on video since the card fills up so quick. I need to get a larger SD card. The one that's in there is a 64 gig, which should be plenty big enough, but obviously not. So if anyone's got a, a larger SD card that they're not using, I would love to put it to good use. So these stickers here covering up the screws. Easy to peel off with a knife like this. And then there's usually one under the paper somewhere. There's a hole there. So just cut cut into the paper. Like so. There's a screw hole there. Yeah, I love this screwdriver set. It's very, very off. There's hardly ever where there's a screw that I need and haven't got the driver for it. This usually covers everything you'd ever do. Now we've just recently moved house and I did have a tripod which holds my phone. I don't know where that is right now since we just moved. So I'm getting my girlfriend to have a look if she finds it. Then I'll start using the phone on the tripod rather than using the GoPro. Now this here, uh, sometimes they're stainless steel, most times they're normal steel. So I get a magnet and it sticks. No good rubbish. For those who keep steel, it is quite heavy. I suppose it would be alright, but I just don't keep steel. Not worth it. The amount of steel that you would take to get a decent amount of money, you would fill your truck or your trailer or your van or whatever you're using for a little reward. Whereas if you filled up your van for copper and aluminium and things like that, you'd make a fortune. It just takes up space, takes up room. I don't know. When I go street scrapping, I need all the room I can get. I often, as you saw the other day, um, run out of room. So imagine if I was keeping steel as well. It's just not worth it. So these bigger hard drives are a lot easier to do. More screws involved, but it's okay. And the platters aren't glass, they're aluminium. So you don't have to worry about the platters breaking in your hand and cutting you. I've had some shocking cuts from small hard drives. When that glass breaks, it's razor sharp. Now before I get carried away and take this off, I'll grab the knife. And I don't know if you can see that. I made a big score into the, into the disc. There's no way that disc will ever be read again. You put that in any machine you like, you're not gonna be able to read it. And I do that to all the hard drives I get. So if anyone ever gives me some e-waste and they're worried about the hard drives, don't, because that's now totally destroyed. It's not gonna affect the sale of it at the scrapyard. I don't care if you scratch it or not. Okay, so that's extruded aluminium. 
the platters are a domestic aluminium and you've got another ring in here which is extruded aluminium and then another domestic aluminium platter and there was a piece that fell down here a second ago I don't know where that went, I'll have to look for it in a minute so sometimes it's hard to get this out because of the reader so you get the magnet off and then pry the reader off get under it and pry it up like that and off it comes along with this uh, board here which has got pins in it and these ones are gold sometimes these are gold sometimes not there's a rubber wash thing around the seal I'll take that off those pins come off nice and easy and they go straight in here there's a little bit of gold on there if you wanted to cut that off where's my little cutters gone these ones will do it's only flashing you get very little for it but hey why not keep it and uh, there's a board here on there it's got, it's got some gold on it as I said, there are some uh, runs that go along the top here and there's supposed to be gold on them, but there's also a lot of steel that the nitric acid has to eat into, so I don't think it's worth it. This board here might be, if I can get it off. Not the easiest thing to get off. I don't normally worry about it. Get this copper off here and this is domestic aluminium now this other plate will come off and that's domestic aluminium that's extruded aluminium domestic aluminium domestic aluminium and then, like I said to you, sometimes there's three screws that hold this motor on. This one doesn't have it. Press fit, so that stays there. And get this other magnet out. I don't know why this one's playing hard. They don't normally play hard to get like this, they're usually uh, quite easy to come off. I don't know why it's being so stubborn. Oh, there's a screw at the back, that's why. Duh. That can be such a tool sometimes. I even looked at that screw before and thought oh, I mustn't forget to do that one. Now this should come off. There we go. Okay, so keep those, sell those, whatever you want to do. Again, this is cast aluminium. That's all there is to do with that. Alright, so I've opened this one up already. I wasn't going to do the repeat ones, ones are the same, but I'm going to do the hard drives because, like I said, I want the person to see that they've all been destroyed. Of course, I dropped a screwdriver.
Oh, wrong box. Rubbish. This uh, I was prying off before. It's got the gold pins inside it. Let's take this bit of metal off. Now these aren't very aren't very good because they're only gold plated on the very tips here. The back of them are quite long and that's all steel. So I've got to individually cut all that off. I'll do that later. Uh, pretty average board. This one to be a low grade for sure. It's only uh, aluminium capacitors. Nothing good there. The steel pins, you can see there's no gold on those. Copper coil. So that there, the one or two, two ICs and two tiny, tiny, tiny ones. So that's a low grade board. A couple of chunky MLCCs, that's about all. All right, so that's one hard drive down. Another hard drive down. We'll get into this part here now. I can remember how to do it. I've undone the screws. I've gone to the back there. I'm pretty sure that by the time I get this video finished, I would have had to stop quite a few times to let the uh, chart the empty the. SD card on the GoPro. Yeah, not, not impressed with the money I paid for it. You guys are saying that there's bad camera footage and I don't understand how I can... I don't know if it's a setting that I can improve with it. I don't know. So this is another one of those boards on the, the hard drive. I like these ones. Not that it's a really special board, but it's not bad for, for the size. It's not as good as a slot card. I can show you some slot cards on my next video. Or I'm doing one soon about boards. And you'll see the good boards in. So I've got one decent uh, BGA and fairly decent IC chips. Uh, I've got some nice chunky MLCCs for those who like doing MLCCs. There's plastic tabs back here and if you try and bend this over you can't because the plastic's there so I just trim them away and then now I should be able to bend that back like so just lift it up should come out with the pins on the board still but doesn't always work this one seems to be playing the game which is good There we go. There's no pins left in that. And these are quite nice. There's a very dark colour, which usually indicates a very thick gold plating. Sometimes you see them with very pale yellow, but these are very, very dark. So I'd expect to get some good gold off those. Same with these ones here. So I bring my little container over. And you could use cutters, but I just break them off at the, at the board because if you use cutters, you can't get right down to the board and you leave little sharp bits sticking up. This way they break off at the board. Normally, when people do videos, they do videos of one item. It makes it easier for you guys to learn. It makes it easier for you guys to understand yields, how much you get from things. But in reality, there's a lot of things that can be treated the same way. So that's why with this tray container here, all this stuff here is going to have to go into nitric acid to dissolve the base metals. Doesn't matter about the plastic, the nitric will still get in there. And uh, so I just put everything that's going to be treated in nitric acid in a pile. There's a CPU there, one of those pinless CPUs. Um, board from a mobile phone I'll have to heat that up and get the little IC chips and stuff off the back of it I 
should be over there in the box. And uh, so, yeah, it's just a whole pile of stuff. Another CPU down there. So that's why I'm doing it in a tray like this, in case you're wondering. Well, with this board, now that I've taken the pins off, the MLCC is there, decent BGA, half decent C IC chip. Another low grade board. Again, here's that little bit of plastic ribbon, so I just get on the, sh on the start of it, on the very edge of the plastic, and run the knife into it. Nine times out of ten, comes up quite easily. There's always the one time that's going to be hard. Especially when you're trying to make a video. That's Murphy's Law, yeah? You saw the other one come up quite easy. I started getting this one ready as well. Pry this plastic off. Should have done this the first time, it was much easier. Get off. Strong magnets. We've had some weird weather lately because it's not quite summer, but winter's over. It's uh, late autumn. What's it called? No, summer, autumn, winter, spring. So late spring, uh, which means it's starting to get hotter. Yesterday, I went to do some work on my car, just a tiny little fiddly bits to finish off the big job we did. And it was so hot. And I mean, oh my God, it was uncomfortably hot. So I thought, well, I'll do it in the, after in the afternoon when it's cooler. Well, I went to go out there in the afternoon to do it, and it just started raining. It was a heat storm. There was thunder and lightning and rain and it was crazy. It's like, how can you go from a stinking hot day to rain? And it was still, it was still warm even though it was raining. Tin. tin on the outside of this, take this off, again there's those long pins, there's only gold on the tips here so I've got to pull those out and cut all that steel off otherwise I'll be wasting nitric acid, breaks off easy enough. Um, I know some people would say you sell it like this if you're going to sell it and maybe you could, maybe you could leave those pins on and sell it, but I still think this wouldn't go any higher than a mid-grade board, because it's only got two little ICs, and some tiny ones, and then just small MLCCs. I don't think anyone would give you more than low grade for it. I take those aluminium capacitors off, because when I use a heat gun to depopulate the board, those aluminium capacitors explode. Okay, so. Hardly worth even picking the board up. This is where that little thing of pins come off. Cut that corner off there. There. Uh, what else did I miss? That's it. Ah. Screw, there's always one. Always one. Rubbish.
Okay. You could probably get away with selling this as a mid-grade board if you leave it exactly as it is. There's some nice gold coated pins there and they're full coated all the way and they're dark. So there's good coating on those ones. They're not always like that. Depends on the brand, who made the machine. And there's gold pins in there as you know. So to be able to get anything decent you'd have to leave all that on there. Um, if someone's going to try and sell this to me as mid-grade I would want all this stuff on there. If you take it off and there's only two little chips then I'm not going to give anything more than low grade for it. See the tab there? I don't know if you can see there's one there and one here. Let's cut those. Now I'll bend back. This is how I do it anyway. You might have your own way of doing it. Probably got a better way than me. But this is what I do. I haven't seen any other way or thought of any other way. And usually they come off like that, no pins left on there. All nice pins there. Okay, so that's all the pins off. Some chunky MLCCs, uh, BGA and IC chip. Low grade. Uh, back to this ribbon. I can see my blade along the edge is ruined now. I go through so many blades. Because, uh, Cutting into aluminium like this doesn't do any favours. Cutting into the discs. That's right, they're not worth much. I get a packet of two blade um, a packet of ten blades for two dollars. So and funny enough, the uh, cheapest ones on the market seem to work better. I've tried getting all the expensive brand ones, and they're rubbish from the start. They would, wouldn't cut the skin off a of pudding. They wouldn't cut the foreskin off a of Frenchman. But these cheap ones, they're really good. Okay, so that's all the gold off there. Again, it's only flashing, you don't get much for it, but uh, don't throw any gold away. I think they went a bit overboard with the stickers. Don't really need to cover every one of them. You can see the indention in this paper. So just cut around it. And there's just there's your screw inside there. There we go. And just give it a cut along the bottom. And Bob's your uncle. Okay, so now we can see there's the pins inside on that little board. So we get these stickers off.
So how have you guys all been anyway? What have you guys been up to? Anyone done anything interesting? Any funny stories to tell? I've been driving all over the city today. Now my car's finally going. It's been good, I've been missing driving it. All right, so that's all the screws exposed. Sorry if this is boring to you guys. I know it's only a hard drive. You've probably seen hundreds of these pulled apart. Oh, there might be someone who hasn't. Not really a lot of gold recovery in in hard drives. There's a board on the back I showed you, but that's all you get, and they're nice pins. But uh, for someone who's looking at buying e-waste, if someone says doing a pile of hard drives, you don't really get much gold off hard drives. So the sort of thing I wouldn't really buy, I'd accept them for free, I'll take them so that they don't go to landfill. But they're not really that good for the gold recovery. It's mostly just aluminium and things like that that you get out of them. Occasionally this is stainless steel, but not very often. They used to all be stainless steel, all the ones I ever got were either stainless steel or aluminium, but now they seem to be steel quite a lot. Okay, so that's all the screws. Let's check it with a magnet. Yep, still. No good. This came, this is what I was looking for that fell down before. This came out of the hard drive to separate the discs. That's aluminium, domestic aluminium. Okay, so back to this again. Sometimes these hard drives have screws all the way around. Now for those people who say, why don't I sell this? I don't know why you would ask, but I did explain at the start of the video the whole purpose of this is so that the person who gave it to me can see that I dismantle these hard drives. They don't want their information getting out, which is per perfectly fine in this day and age. And uh, as you probably know, I'm not interested in on selling. I'm in it for the gold. I prefer to get the e-waste and scrap it and, and recover the gold than I would to sell it. I think it's a, a little bit rude when some people get given the stuff and then they just on sell it. And if they're gonna on sell it, they should at least offer to buy it from the beginning. Okay, so run the knife through the aluminium. Big score line right the way through. And I remembered that there's some discs in there that I put in the box that I didn't scratch. I will get those out. I'll do it now before I forget. All that stuff there gets sorted, so I've got um, a, a, a display box type, what do you call it, a, a piggy, uh, pigeon holes and uh, each got trays in them and different things and all these things here get sorted I take it in there and divide it up into its right things okay so this is the one that was on top that I've scratched straight across like that and I'll never be red again It's not very good for your blade, but that's all right. I'm only using the tip. So this one's been scratched. All right.
Did I miss a screw? Yep. Extruded aluminium, domestic aluminium, domestic aluminium, extruded aluminium, so you've got to lift these uh, little rubber things on these pins, you lift them up, get them off there, otherwise the, the magnet can't come out. comes the reader and the seed, uh, pins there's the pins I was showing you from the back they just break off pretty easy you can use pliers depending on the, uh, the brackets sometimes they're easier than others Like that. Uh, again, there's that little board. You can see the gold along there. But it's too awkward to get off. It's supposed to be gold along there. I'm not going to bother with that. I will destroy the reader though, just so not that it matters. It doesn't store information, but for the sake of it. And uh, there's the copper, aluminium, domestic aluminium. Oh, wrong box. The rubbish box. You belong in there. Okay. Domestic aluminium. Extruded aluminium. Domestic aluminium. Domestic. And can't get this off so now we're left with that cast aluminium and they're quite heavy so when you get a few of these together they add up and they're quite happy to have the aluminium in the middle of it it's better for them because they're up, up, uh, upgrading it's going from cast to a more valuable uh, domestic aluminium That's about as far as that one wants to wind out. Hello. And another screw there. Come on. Thank you. One more. Now, yeah, hopefully, it should slide out or something. I've undone the screws that are going through into those metal things. So, why it's not coming out, I don't know. Oh, screwdriver, 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 there we go. This board off and see what's under it. It might somehow be stopping it because it's all shaped in there the way.
the super drill fits these. I don't really want to have to change back to the other bit just to do two screws. No. Uh, well, put you in here, take you out. Come on, my big fat fingers, pick it up. Thank you. the pins that were logged into this one these pins here are not very good so we've got one two ICs, three BGOs, a couple of small ones there, and that's it. A tiny little gold border, um, old gold border, what do you call those things? No, I'm just going to call it a gold border because I forget the last word. Alright, so I'll take these off. And there's another one where I've got to trim those fingers, so it's three now. Oh, this wouldn't be an IC, this is just copper. Yep, just copper windings. If you haven't seen them before, that's what it looks like. So that's a pretty average board. I would say that's low grade, maybe mid grade. If it was chucked in with a pile of other good boards, I'd let it go as mid grade. gold fingers here because they're not too bad they're not anything special but they're, they're not bad they're not the full coated ones full length like, like normal these ones are half quite often you get some that are half length and there's a USB slot there that'll have some pins in it but um, I'll, I'll get that off later when I depopulate the board. I use my heat gun to depopulate it. Look, where'd that go? There's a silver tacti tactical switch. Get it off. I'll keep that switch aside. I don't know where the other one went that I had. Be down in here somewhere. Oh, why can't this come out? There we go. All I had to do was ask. It's a bit bigger board than the last time, I think. So, which was the one that fit? No, not that one. Not that one. What about on here? Yeah, that's the one for there. So we're going to find one to fit this. 
probably a smallish one. That's it. See, I love this kit. It's so good. You get to know after a while, roughly, whereabouts in the deck that they are. Within one or two, you're going to just try a couple of them and use it in the right spot. I know everybody's different with the way that they grade boards. Everyone's got a different opinion on what's good and what's not. Um, I got a pretty good idea what, for, for me, what is good. So I go by what I think is good, not what anyone else thinks. I mean, it's like going to a scrapyard. They're all different. They all say different things. All right, so we're getting there. I'll do these screws. There's those pins. These ones are gold, which is good. Sometimes they're not. There's not a lot on them, very tiny amount. You, you don't make much from them. But like I said, they don't throw gold away. They're making it hard to come off. They're not usually that hard. Take the copper off. Domestic aluminium. Magnet. So I'm just going to get these ones here now. So how many of you guys who watch my videos like to do scrapping? And let me know in the comments, I'm keen to see. Do all of you process what you scrap or do some of you guys sell it or let me know. I'm keen to find out what my, what my viewers do, whether they're all refiners or whether they're all scrappers or do you buy your e-waste, you can't, can you not be bothered scrapping? I don't know, just let me know. I love it personally, I think it's therapeutic. All right, uh, extruded. See, when I was going through a pretty dark place, um, I found that scrapping helped. Because while you're sitting there doing this, you're getting your mind off other things. So it's quite good extruded. 
There's one on the floor as there would be. There's always one that drops. And my two fat fingers, too hard to get it. Extruded. Domestic. Oh, I didn't, didn't scratch that one. Extra, um, domestic. Come back here. Alright. That one's no good now. It'll never be red again. Uh, it cast aluminium. Domestic aluminium. Okay, domestic aluminium. That's that one done. Now I had a lot of trouble getting this apart. There's tape all the way along around there, so I had to cut through that. Then I had to try and, you can see where I've tried prying it. I made a hell of a mess, but I've got that part off. So now I've got to work out how to get this bit off. These magnets are so strong, I can't do anything. Not easy, I tell you. I haven't really thought about these when they made them. Oh, I've had to empty the, uh, set the SD card again. Put the footage on my computer. So now we're good to go for a little bit longer. So where were we? We are getting into this one. Work out how. There's tabs there that I didn't know were there. That's probably how I should have got the other one off. But I can't see anyone for this one. Let's see what's up here. Never, never ever seen this particular hard drive before, so that's why I'm having trouble. Don't want to damage the board, so I'll go this way. Some things you scrap are really easy and other times they're really hard. Once you work out how it's done, it's alright. You know for next time. screws under there but last time I took these rubber things off looking for screws there wasn't any it tricked me get off it would have made life so much easier if I'd known about this from the start that side done. Now, get this big plastic bit off. You see, there's a plastic clip here. I reckon that had something to do with it because it was in there. I 
did see those screws, but I'm one because they don't go right through. You can see down here they don't. It's just to hold this plastic on. I don't know how they do this. Yep, that's what you do. Drop the screwdriver. Uh, uh -huh. I do believe I found a screw. Uh, I hate gravity. Why do things always have to fall down? Why can't they float? Uh, that's a Torx. He's happy this fits it. Yep. Mm, kind of. That's going to be a bit bigger than this one. All right. Let's have a look in my box of tricks here. Let's see what we can find. You stay there. I'll put this on the lid because that was handy for the actual tops of the hard drives. Well, it was my pizzas. I couldn't believe it. I don't understand how they could have possibly had them ready so quick. It was like five minutes ago we rang them. Not even. That's what it feels like anyway. But you normally wait half an hour or more. It's funny because the, uh, the chick that delivered it, last time we had all pizzas ordered and she came, she come flying up our driveway because she's obviously driving quick trying to get the orders done and she ran straight into the back of my mate's car which is no damage to his it's a Land Rover like mine it was solid chassis at the back and she had a little uh, Suzuki Sprint or something I don't know what it was she just went straight into the back of it and I heard crunch and I lost it laughing now every time she comes to deliver pizzas she has trouble looking at me out of embarrassment be another one here you can see the indents in the paper and indentation it gives it away where the screw holes are most of you probably already know that but I'm assuming there's some people that have never done a hard drive who would be watching this I'll leave all that on there not that it's going to be extra weight but <coughs> came off it so they can keep it This would be interesting. I'm a guessing that there's going to be some Americans watching this and probably even people from other countries. So, just out of curiosity, let me know if the pizzas there look as good as this because this, these are pretty average. So, that's my ham and cheese. Yum. I'm a simple guy, I like simple things. This is a pepperoni supreme by the looks of it yum there is another shop that I prefer but they're a lot more expensive and you cannot see the pastry the toppings are just so thick and this looks like uh, no clue like a vegetarian maybe and they're pretty small they're about the size of a dinner plate so if you guys can let me know what the pizzas look like where you are, just just for curiosity. I'm assuming since Domino is an American company, that you guys over there would get much better pizzas. Alright, so this should come off now. Get off. 
really I missed any screws. There's one there. Yep, of course it would be. Let's just throw extra screws on it, make it hard. There's already more screws on there than I've done on any hard drive yet. Alright. Check it with a magnet. Yep, sticks, it's tin, steel, whatever you want to call it. Okay. I've got a parcel coming soon from one of my American buddies. He's been a really good supporter of my channel. I would love to say his name to give him credit, but he doesn't want it broadcasted for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't understand why, but it's not my problem to know. It's his privacy. So, uh, there's a couple of boxes coming. I know what's in one of them. It's going to be some uh, card, slot cards that I bought off. He he, uh, he went through my e-waste buyer page on Facebook, and so if you want to look it up, e-waste buyer on Facebook, and you'll get my page. Or the other page is Gold Refining and Recovery, or Gold Recovery and Refining with Pete. I can't remember which one it is now. Those are the two ways that you can contact me on Facebook Messenger. So anyway, I got these slot cards that I bought off him. And they're going to turn up pretty soon. I've got a small collection myself. I'm going to add to what he sends me. And do a video on slot cards. Extruded, extruded, domestic, These are really strong magnets. The brass wire on the back of this reader. Uh, brass coloured wire, I don't know if it's just anodised copper, or anodised aluminium maybe. This is that board that I was telling you about. And instead of having fingers, I mean, instead of having pins, it's got these fingers. And that's unusual, I've not seen that before. Nice. Uh, nice all the way along here because it's a wide one, all gold along there. I might even try and get this one off since it's so big. Should be a running knife underneath it, surely. I do it without cutting myself. I'm a butcher and I was always taught never cut towards yourself. But, feels a bit un uncomfortable going the opposite way. Here we go, look. It's got aluminium on the back, but that's all right. Nitric acid will eat that. I don't know if you can see that, nice bit of gold all the way along there. Probably not much, but... Alright, domestic aluminium. Rubbish.
Domestic. Domestic. Oh, I just threw that disc in there, didn't I? Oh. I always end up remembering. I don't. I don't let any go through without scratching them. I just forget. Them. Good morning, everybody. It's the next day. Um, I'm going to take my GoPro back to the shop where I bought it from. See if I can get my money back. As uh, after about 20 minutes of recording, the camera gets so hot it wants to shut down, and that's not good. Um, apart from you guys saying that the footage is not so great, I can't have it overheating after 20 minutes. It's, uh, it's just not on. So I am going to do these on camera. I wasn't going to, but for the sake of uh, extruded aluminium, for the sake of the lady seeing that I destroy them, I need to. I need to do it on camera, so I'm going to find that piece that I had that fits these. No, not that one. Yeah, it might be one of these ones. Well, of course I dropped it. Where'd it go? There it is. That's the one. So I'm excited because today is Thursday and as I said in my last video, I'm going to go street scrapping again today. So I'm trying to get this video finished or at least finish filming, not maybe not edited but maybe finish filming so that I can get ready to go scrapping. I've got some diesel in the Discovery which I bought for the motor to put in my Defender. And I'm gonna siphon that diesel out. It's got a full tank of diesel. So rather than have to pay for any, I'll siphon all that out. I need to do that before I can go. And I don't want to take it too long about it because I want to have plenty of time to go scrapping. So I will be filming another another video today on street scrapping. I'm going to try and see if it'll work with my, my girlfriend filming with the phone rather than me using this GoPro because I didn't get a very long video last time with it overheating and I plan on being out there for two or three hours today so I want to get a decent video so if, if she doesn't want to hold the camera I'll do it myself but it'd be so much easier if she did this could be stainless so we'll try nut steel good it scratches all the way across it then I right, so <clears throat> undo this screw here and get the magnet out I've got a feeling I'm going to need a smaller I don't know how it fits sometimes they have different size screws which is annoying, there can be two or three different size screws in the inside it. But sometimes they're all the same, which is good. Tiny pins on that. They're very small. Very small. Don't think I've ever seen them that tiny before.
couple of wire. Sometimes they're so hard to get off. Of course I dropped it. Alright. Have I in him? Extruded. No, that's actually sticking to the magnet. First time I've ever seen that. Oh, it's rubbish. Like I said, be very careful. There's the glass. That's one. That one's been scratched. Hmm. Wow. Come on. Here you come. It's just plastics in here. Domestic um cast. Alright, I'm gonna scratch this one. Alrighty, there's one more done. Last one to go. Yes, I'm not happy with this GoPro at all. I know some people have warned me against them. Um, I'm just not sure if it's because it's second hand, if I got it from the pawnbroker, or if that's what they're like even when brand new. I think I would take a chance on buying one brand new one and see if I have issues. But uh, I don't know, so I'll see if I can get my money back. I paid about 400 bucks. A lot of money. I'd rather have put an extra few hundred in and get the new one, the latest one out. Oh well. We all do silly things. I can't find the indention for this uh, screw, so I'm going to have to try and peel the whole sticker off in one hit. There it is. I haven't done the board yet because I've got to swap over to the Phillips. While I've got this piece in, I'm just going to keep on doing screws. There's not really much to hard drives, especially for gold recovery. Um, so if anyone out there is new to scrapping for gold recovery and they get a, an offer for a whole pile of hard drives, I would make sure you get them for free because there's certainly not much gold, a tiny, tiny bit of gold that's on these boards. Wow, it must be the small hard drives that have tin inside because I've never seen those stick with the big ones. There's only one disc in this one.
Rubbish. So now it's taken care of. These are hard drive, these are magnets by the way. They're so strong. If you have a screwdriver like this and it's not magnetic and you just sit there doing that five or ten minutes, there's a good chance that you'll be able to magnetize it. It all depends on your screwdriver. This one seems to have all the shiny parts come off and I can see copper underneath. I don't know if that's just a copper layer or whether it's, I doubt it's all copper because it's not, you can't bend it. Shit. But anyway, I've, I've done this a few times with different tools. We're watching TV or something, just sit there and stroke it along the magnet. And it does magnetize the screwdriver. You need a good magnet to do that with. You can't do it with a weak one. It's got to be nice and strong. Copper wire. I bet it's got another screw on the back. You see, some don't and some do. And it's a shame they can't make them all the same. Yep. So the pins on here are gold. Sometimes you will come across a few that aren't, but the majority of them have gold gold coating on them. Not very much, but it adds up. Aluminium, just this magnet now. It's hard to get the screwdriver under the screw with the magnet so strong, it keeps pulling the screwdriver off. Okay, that's the last magnet, that's it. Now I'm gonna get this board off. Where's the screwdriver going? Which one are you? I think you're this one. Come on. I wish I had tiny little fingers. Okay, so this is a bit better. See, so it's got three decent size IC chips, a little BGA, but for the size of the board, another little BGA, but having those three IC chips makes this a lot better. I would uh, kind of be reluctant, but I would, I would let that go through if it's got the pins and everything on. If someone was to sell it to me now with the pins and all, 
I'd put that through as high grade. Only because there's three decent sized chips on such a small board and the pins. If someone took the pins off, I'd put it through mid grade. Because it's just on the borderline now of mid grade. But uh, there's a little tiny gold corner oscillator there. A gold border thing, gold border oscillator. So yeah, that left as it is, I would go as high grade. Um, people from other countries who want to sell me e-waste, it's going to be a little bit hard, I'm not saying impossible, but a little bit hard because I've been bitten or someone tried to scam me, didn't work though, because I went through PayPal so I was managed to get my money back. But you know, it's too easy just to hand over money online and then hope that you get your item. And there's a lot of scammers out there that are advertising e-waste for good money like the purple ceramics and so they get the money and then they never send the item now i some guy claimed he was selling purple ic uh, purple ceramic cpus which i really really want to get hold of and uh he was asking like 70 or 80 dollars a kilo he had reckons he had kilos of them well that in australia means a lot more than 70 dollars it's uh about 200 dollars 150 or something like that. So I sent in good faith all this money over PayPal and he didn't send the item. Luckily, PayPal refunded me. So it's quite one bit, once bitten, twice shy, you know. I'm a bit reluctant to send money for people in another country. But I, I'll probably will, but I'll just be very careful. And, I don't know. All right, good, good board, that one. So now we've got this little bit of uh, ribbon here. Probably not worth doing, but I, I just can't leave gold behind. Makes it hard that they recess it in so deep. You can't get flat with the board. There we go. Gotcha. All right, cast. That's the hard drive's done. Woohoo! Alrighty. Now to work out how to do this. Since there's two of these identical. I will scrap one off camera, but I will do these other ones because they're all different. So I'm assuming that somehow this rubber foot comes off. This part here is all rubber. You can feel it, it flexes. Can it be? Oh. Slowly getting there. Screw under here. Yep. I always like to hide them under stickers. So it's one, is there one on the side? Yep.
can't quite see. Oh, it's Phillips. Too big, probably, for this, and too small for the other one. Always the way. I've got larger attachments to these, so I may need to use one of these in the larger ones. God, things like this are so hard to pick up when you've got fat fingers. I wish I had rubber fingerprints. Alright, see if that fits. We didn't go in there. No. Alright. Screws, screws, and more screws. From memory, this whole black casing that's holding the, the boards it slides out in one piece. Should we get these screws off? I'll do these two. These are for the boards. slide out somehow maybe not there's definitely no screws anyway Is it going to be so difficult? I think this has to come off. There's definitely no screws in there. Yeah, there's a screw there now. That's why it wouldn't slide out. Good, I'm glad there's two of these. All right, so the first thing I always always car pull these aluminium capacitors off because they explode when you're using a heat gun to, to populate and they scare the crap out of you. Let's cut these wires. Uh, 
Uh, got those little screws in here. Which should release this plastic part here. These little bits of wire that are joined to these boards here, they loop around and they join to the main board. And you see the gold connectors on there? They can be quite good for gold recovery. Sometimes they're only a thin coating, but nine times out of 10, they're a nice thick coating. So what I like to do is chop, chop them off here before pulling all the board and everything, because what happens is if they disconnect from the board, You've still got a little bit of gold that's stuck on the board, which... All right, back, I don't do the hard drive again. The GoPro, sorry. These are probably about the most elaborate um, modems I've ever seen. Most of the time, they're just a single board with not much on them. These ones are, as you can see, a couple of boards quite full. It'd be nice if they're all like this. Small pair of cutters here, which are better for getting into tight spots. And getting these wires that the big one just wouldn't get. Like these ones here. Like I said, I don't want to have these wires get pulled off. I'll show you why when the time comes. they can't accidentally be pulled there's one coming off there somewhere I was just looking at the footage and normally when I upload all the footage in one hit it all loads up onto the computer in order from one to you know to the end but because I've been uploading a small like six or seven frames at a time uh, I don't know if it's all in order and I'm up to 23 frames and they could all be mixed up, for all I know. So I'm going to have fun editing because I've got to, I've got to actually watch every frame, every uh, little video, to make sure they all coincide with each other, and make sure they're all in order. And I haven't even finished yet. There's going to be quite a few frames yet before this is finished. And he does about six or seven frames before the, the card fills up. Now I'm not going to bother trying to get a bigger card because I'm going to see if I can take the GoPro back. I'm just not happy with it. Especially if it's overheating. That's not good. Surely it's not supposed to overheat. Alright, so a nice piece of extruded aluminium. Uh, 
I see Chip there, I see Chip there. There's bound to be some underneath this tin. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute though, I'll just finish taking all this off. There's a wire stuck somewhere. Yep. That's rubbish. And the other one I had where that come off uh, is rubbish. good board this one I mean these two I don't know if you guys have ever done any of these before. Be interested to know. Let me let me know if you guys have done hard drives, um, sorry, modems like this before. I don't know how many different uh, models or makers or brands or whatever you want to call it. I like this. As I said, they're usually just a flat board. Those ones, those two there, would just be a single board. Most of the time there's next to nothing on them, just a couple of chips in it. This is packed, it's got all kinds of stuff on there. Another nice piece of extruded aluminium. Take these off straight away before I forget. Okay, it seems like I've missed a screw, but I can't find any. Just the wires uh, that were through these connector things here. Oh, still a screw somewhere. Uh, one of those clips came off, and I tried to avoid that. All right, so I'll cut this little gold connector off. Put that in there wire over there right so now what I like to do is I, I get on the edge of the board like so and I scrape across the board because I want to get the connector and the plug that's on the board so just do that so it's come off the board now I don't know if you can see this but the connector is still in there so now I can just chop that off not that it's a huge problem, it's just, it makes it harder to get the little piece later that, 
Uh, it must be on the other board. I'll find it and show you when the time comes. It's quite easy to do it this way. And then you know you've got both parts. And because there's something decent for the cutters to grip onto, it makes it easy. But when it's just the base, there it is there, the base bit. I don't know if you can see that. There's not a lot there to grip, so you try and... Sometimes you can get them and sometimes it just leaves a mess. It's just something that I do, I mean, it's not a big deal. It's just little things that I like to make life easy for myself. These connectors, I'm told, have a decent amount of gold on them for, for what they are, for their size. I should really be saving them up and doing a video just on them alone. Something I've never done, I've always just put them in with other things, but... I guess one day I'll get motivated to keep them on their own. I know other people have done videos on them, that's probably why I haven't really bothered It's a shame when they put these so far from the edge because they're just a little bit harder to get. The cutters only just reach far enough. There we go. Yeah, see the base came off separate. There it is. Not long now till I go scrapping, folks. Probably about two hours. I'm trying to finish this video before I go, and I've got to go out and siphon some fuel out of the Discovery. And the way this camera keeps overheating, and I've got to keep stopping and taking the film off it and put it on the computer, and a uh, little tactical switch, we'll get silver out of that. Take this white box thing off here, it's no good, but I need to be able to bend those back. Alright, so now they should bend backwards nicely. Come right back. And you can see these pins here are full coated the whole way. These are the ones I like. They snap off quite easily so you can get them without it much fuss. Beauty. Okay, looks like there's a card slot here for some sort of um, SIM card or something. Some nice gold pins in there. Alright, so now to get this tin off. These, ply these cutters here are blunt been for quite a few years. These orange ones are my new ones. So I try and keep those 
uh, in good nick and I only use these red ones for doing this kind of thing all these little ones these cutters are good when they're sharp but when they go blunt it makes life hard Not many ICs under all this, I was hoping for quite a few. Some BGAs would have been nice. Not a one gold corner BGA yet, I th really thought I'd see some of them. So we've got a small BGA there, and another small BGA there. IC, BGA, IC, IC, IC. Uh, these are some of those diode things, the resistors that I just got silver out of not long ago. Another, another BGA just there. Some MLCCs, these ones look like they're gold on the ends instead of nickel. They're very small, but they're shining a gold colour on the end. I'll have to get close to that and have a look at the camera on my phone or something. Because I've never seen that before. So we've got some pins on here. They're nice pins. Very good coating on those. Same with those. Very good. Two ICs there. Just those pins, they're really good. So this would be a low grade because everything's so small. If they were decent size IC chips and BGAs, then this would be a higher grade board, but I think, and you know, I don't really care about what other people do, but I class this as a low grade one. Um, so all this is rubbish. Even this blue things, I don't keep those anymore. I did a video on those and they were useless. I think these metal things that the screws went into just pull out, yep. Usually they're brass, but these ones don't look to be brass. Alright, so this BGA is useless. It's the ones that have no gold in them. It's just like a circuit die you know, mounted bit of fibre. There's nothing in those at all. So there's that BGA, that IC chip, little BGA there. These are nothing, they're just copper windings. They're always behind these ports here. So whenever you see these ports, the ones right behind it are just copper. I get this uh, tack to the switches off. Put that aside. Okay. I find a small pair of cutters like this are important. A lot of times you can't get into them with the into things with the big cutters. Uh, 
So we've got a screw there to undo. And then this should slide out. Right there. So there's some nice gold pins in there. This gold flashing, it uh, might look impressive, but really there's nothing to it. Any of the flashing that you see on boards is near nothing. Not worth getting excited over. This is just heat transfer paste. So there's some good chunky MLCCs in the back there. There's four of those. A little bit of flashing. These gold fingers are okay. They're not flashing. And... There's this blue board on top of the green board. When you heat it up with the heat gun, that will separate. So now I can get these tabs here with the gold. And you see how I do that? I just sort of get one on one side of it at the back, use the edge here for leverage, and just slide it across like that. Show you again so I get behind it. Use this part for leverage on here and just slide it across and it brings off the base already stuck to the clip. I cut these fingers off, I'm keeping those. That goes over to there, get heated up with a heat gun. Let's see if I can get these things off out of the way. So I can bend that back. So one stayed in there, but the other two are on here. Three, other three. They break off nicely and they break off down there. The reason why I don't like using cutters to do that is because you can't get right flush to the board. You end up leaving some of your gold pins sticking up. This way they snap off at the base and you get maximum amount of your gold pin. Um, USB uh, plug here. Sometimes there's a double layer like this, and I don't know why they do that. There's two lots of tin going around. I don't know if it's just a fault that happens sometimes or whether they purposely do it. Maybe the machine that does it, sometimes two come off instead of one and they wrap two around instead of one. I don't know. Maybe it's one long piece. There's some nice gold pins there. I don't know if you can see them shining. Pretty hard to bend these ones back because of the things on here. Sometimes they snap out of the way. All right. Not always, but I was lucky this time.
the outer casing comes off and leaves the main plate in the middle there with the wires in it. Bend them out and then the whole plug slides off nice and easy. Like that. Twist them all together so you don't lose them and then backwards and forwards and they snap off. Nice. So you bend these ones out because they're bent over the end of the plastic like that and then off it comes. And some nice pins there. Bend these ones over. Pull. Twist them so they can gather up. good full length coated pins too. Quite often they're the ones that are only um, halfway gold and then normal the rest of the way. So I like them when they're like this one. I don't know if you can see Nice collection of pins there. Beautiful. So what I do with these pins here, I get the knife. Be careful you don't cut yourselves. Just run it along the base of the the, the pins eventually it'll come up you can either come down this side or you can just snap it backwards and forwards and there you go nice rack of gold pins probably a better way of doing it but that's how I do it some pins here but they're pretty average there's not much on those there's some more of those ones they're good oh, we just did a minute ago see those they're short but they're gold all the way along that's nothing Nothing much under these. Some tiny, tiny ICs and some small uh, MLCCs, that's all. It's a real letdown. I really hope to at least get one in Gold Corner BGA. I want to get a big collection of Gold Corner BGAs and do a nice big pile of them. I just don't see many. So the heat gun will get these pins off and these chips. This is all rubbish. There's a low grade board that one. Alright, so that one's gonna be exactly the same. I'll do that one off camera. 
I don't mind doing it on camera for you, but just the way that this is heating up so quickly and all the rest of it, I'll just try and get things done that we haven't already seen. Good if I looked, eh? Would have made life a lot easier. CCs, but they're a greyish white colour. I don't know if there's any good or not. Okay, so these two black things here, they're not aluminium capacitors, they look similar. They're actually little copper coils inside. You get a nice wire off them. It's not long, but it's something to do while watching TV. Extruded aluminium. IC chip there, it's quite big. More of these things which I said to you are always behind those ports. They're just rubbish. I'll show you when I get one off. Just copper coils. So these are the pins I was just talking about a few minutes ago where they're only half coated. So they bent over the plastic, you bend them back and then, actually no, these ones might be full length ones. They look very similar to some that are half coated. They go as far as the plastic and then they're not gold, but these ones, um, they fooled me. Because these ones luckily are full, full length. Which is good to see. After a while of doing this, you get sick skin on your thumbs and fingers like I do. Most people will probably get stabbed by the wire if they tried doing this. Probably because I don't wear gloves. Don't need to now. Still get cuts occasionally, but that's no big deal. Okay. No. 
nice, nice full length. A lot of them here, it's a good board for pins. I don't think I've ever seen this many on a board before. It's usually only about six. Six of these products I meant. I don't sell my boards, a lot of people do, I'm in it for the gold so I'll take everything, but I'm pointing out to you what I class as mid-grade, low-grade, etc. for when people want to sell to me. It probably would have been a mid-grade board but I've taken the pins off, so now this here, with one big IC and a couple of small ones, a few small ones, is that, that's it, there's nothing on this at all, so now it's a low-grade board. Alright, so that's that one done, it'll be the same. Okay guys, I've just come down to the shop where I bought my GoPro from and I'll show you. So this is Cash City where I bought my GoPro and I bought the gold which I refined in my video and I said to you at the time that I come back here all the time because they're really good people. Now, my last GoPro, the one I was using, all it was is just what you see there. Nothing else, no, not even a cord. All right, but because I had problems with it, they swapped it for a higher. So the last one was a GoPro 7. This one's a GoPro 8. Doesn't look any different, but it's an 8. And look at the stick it comes with. The big handle thing to hold onto it with. And then, not only that, there's an armband, but there's also the cord, which I should have got the first one I did, I had to go and buy it. And a charger with a spare battery. So I just plug this in there and it can charge my battery for me so anytime I go out now scrapping or whatever if the battery gets dead I can swap it over how good's that and that was all free of charge just a straight swap for a 7 to an 8 and all the accessories so that's why I keep coming back to Cash City I'm not sponsored by them they're just really good people really good service so now I go home and try and finish the video off because the other camera just kept cutting out all the time getting too hot Alright, so I'll see you back at home and we'll see if we can finish that video. Now I forgot to mention Rebecca. Uh, Rebecca was the one that served me. She was so friendly. They all are. They're all really friendly people here. So Josh was the one that organised it. Rebecca was the one that said, yep, there's one here, come get it, because there's a few different stores. So cheers to um, Rebecca and cheers to Josh. Good on yous. Alright, so I don't know where I was up to before I... Uh took the GoPro back to the shop um, it's a couple of days later now and pretty sure we're doing this board here so there's some IC chips some little BGA chips there and there there are lots of little IC chips everywhere decent one there that's worth nothing these are worth nothing and these are those other wires I told you about that aren't full coded. These come from USB connectors as well. Uh, not USB, Ethernet or phone plugs. Um, so there's this bit of plastic here, which sometimes you can separate easy. You can see on the back, they're not actually stuck to it. So they're just like that, see? And I don't know if you can tell, there's only gold on the tip. So the first half, the rest of it's not. So what I do here is I get rid of that plastic I get my cutters and go up to where the gold stops 
and then chop it. These cutters are brand new and they're blunt. Alright, I'll put those in there. And I'll do that with all of these. So I'll carry on with that while I watch Hoffman Family Gold. I'm so addicted to gold, I'll tell you what. I, everything gold, I love it. So we've got some MLCCs, some of these little LEDs with light and gold in them, tactical switch for silver, MLCCs all over this board, some nice chunky ones. But it's the gold I'm interested in, and these IC chips are pretty tiny. I would class this as a... Uh, if, if the pins were left on, it would be just borderline mid-grade. If the pins are gone, it'd definitely be low grade. So I'll carry on with that, and then we'll move on to the last two. All right, so I'm back to this uh, other one here, which is pretty much the same as what I did before. It's got the two boards inside and all the plastic. Um, you've just seen me scrap one, so there's no point in putting this one on camera. I'll, I'll watch Hoffman Gold while I do this one, and I'll come back when we do this last one here. <clears throat> okay, I'm down to the last one. Uh, it's just a, a line. There's no screws anywhere on this, okay? It's a clip together type deal. So there's a line along here, and then it goes down the back, and then along here. And this outer shell comes off. So I'm just going to try and get the screwdriver in there and lever it, which can be easier said than done. So, away she comes. That's all plastic, it's rubbish. And just got a couple of screws in here. Now, I'm using the new GoPro, all right? So I would really like you guys, if you can, to put in the comments if you noticed any difference. Is the footage better? Is it the same? Uh, also, because it's on a head mount, I don't know if I should have it facing exactly straight forward so that where I look, it looks. Or I've got it at the moment tilted just a little bit forward so it's kind of looking down at what I'm looking at. Have I got it at the right angle? Should I have it facing straight forward or should I tilt it more down? I need to know so I can do better in the future. So please let me know how I'm going with this new GoPro. It's gonna take a while till I get used to it to know where's the best place to face it all that type of thing. All right, so now we're just gonna unscrew three screws. And again, I've got some of these wires with the gold connectors and they go onto these panels on the side so I clip these now so that they don't pull off. I want the cables, the connectors to stay on the board like I told you before. I cut these off now so that they can't get pulled away. And now I should be right to pull the board out, hopefully. I don't know what's holding it in there. There might be a screw under this thing here, so I'll take this off. I'm in the heat sink. Uh, over there. Okay, so I can't see what's holding it in other than these things on the side might be. Let's see if I can get some lever action onto it. And this panel here slides out by the looks of it. There we go, just released it. And this is all rubbish. See, now I can trim these wires up and leave the gold connectors on the board. These little pliers are awesome at this. Good for getting into intricate parts, hard to get two bits.
I'm really hoping that I get good footage from this GoPro because one, it cost me a bit of money, but also it's hands-free. There's so many more videos I can do hands-free instead of continuously stopping, showing you what I'm going to do, then doing it, and then stopping and showing you what I'm going to do, and so on. I'd much rather be able to just keep going like this hands-free. But at the same time, if the footage is no good, then, you know, it's, it's got to be good for you guys, otherwise you just won't watch. So... I don't know right now if the angle I've got it on is perfect. Are you able to see what I'm doing? Um, so I need to know. The feedback is much required, much appreciated. Gold connector off, these ones here. Sometimes these can be quite tricky to get under. These little ones are better, they hook under it better. But they're, they're very brittle, the jaws break on these real easy. I prefer to get it started than go with the bigger ones. Alright, so what have we got on this board? MLCCs all over it. Tiny little gold board oscillator there. That's nothing. These are nothing. That's nothing. That's nothing. Just copper under those. That's nothing. So we've got some tactical switches with silver. We've got this BGA is nothing. That's no good. That one's alright. That one's alright. Little IC there. A few little ICs. And another IC there, another smaller IC there, transistor, another wire with some gold collectors, I'll get those off, and uh, that's about it, but, um, MLCCs, really nothing special, I'm actually disappointed, I'd hope to see at least one gold corner BGA out of all these, not one of them, I'm pretty sure in the past I've done modems and had gold corner BGAs, and out of all these, I would have thought there'd be at least one. So, got some plugs here with gold with pins in them. These should be the ones that are full length, if I'm correct. It yeah, might be. Hard to tell, this one's a bit short. Thing from behind it to make life a bit easier. No, that broke off. 
course it did. Uh, maybe these are the ones. Yeah, they're full coated, but they're really not a very thick coating. It's only just slightly yellow. So not very good quality, these ones. The other ones were far better. So all in all, this is a bad board. It's bad for gold recovery on the pins, bad for bad um, no ICs, bugger all ICs on there. Doesn't surprise me, it's a Telstra board. And I've said about Telstra, no need to go into detail there. Those who are Australians should know. Last one now. Alright, so it's just gonna get these tactical switches off. I'll take these off now, otherwise when I use the heat gun this plastic melts. And they're, they're pretty easy to get off now. side in a container that I've got where I'm keeping them. There's a little bit of metal that sticks out either side so I just grab hold of that metal and it all comes out. Just leaves the plastic switch behind. And there we go. A couple of little co copper coils here. They're tiny, but all adds up. Alright, so all in all, I'm not impressed at all. So there you go. That's the end of all the modems and hard drives. Um, yeah, so please just let me know if I'm doing okay with this GoPro. Um, I'm hoping you guys are going to like it because I do want to keep working hands-free. Uh, I do have a tripod that can hold my phone, but I'm not sure where it is right now. And that's no good on the field anyway if I'm detecting or you know, beach hunting or whatever, scrapping, uh, we call it street scrapping. It's so much easier to have a GoPro. So, uh, feedback please guys, and I hope you liked it, thanks for watching. There are a couple of other videos on the way too, so stay tuned. Uh,